here we are, ready to talk. Thoroughbred horse racing on Horsepower PSN. Fourth of July. How about that for giving it our all on a holiday? How's it going, guys? Happy fourth? Happy fourth to you and all the listeners. Happy fourth, Chad. Happy fourth of July, buddy. All right, so we've got two races. As a matter of fact, we're doing a racetrack we've never done before in the... I think, John, we've been doing this for like 10 years. In 100 the, years. Feels it, like 100. It could be 10. <laughs> and we've never done... Who knows? We might have, maybe we did do it eight years ago. We just don't remember. But I don't think we've ever done Indianapolis. So we're going to do Indianapolis today. Uh, we are also going to do uh, Belmont at the Big A. That's the uh, premier race uh, that we are going to talk about. It is a grade one. Um, and then Chad is going to have a, a couple of bonus picks like he did last week. And we're going to try to do every week. And again, those are only available on Patreon. So keep that avail- Keep that in mind, everybody who is uh, watching and listening here on YouTube. Uh, we are uh, going to have uh, not only those bonus races, but... Uh, the race at Indianapolis is going to be available only on Patreon, so keep that in mind. It's five dollars a month. We have three new Patreon members, by the way, that joined uh, from the last uh, week. Thomas Luna. Uh, let's see who else joined. Uh, Brian, just Brian, I think. Is that just Brian? I think so. Just Brian. Uh, Terry Alexander and John Lingren. So four new members on patreon this week thomas luna brian terry alexander and john lingren welcome and uh, thanks for joining so uh there you go and they got the advantage of uh, checking out chad's bonus picks last week uh which both came in by the way what did you think about that race uh, at silla because for about a, a minute zagara uh was the four to five favorite and it was like, wait, wait a second, what, what happened there? And, of course, the odds changed dramatically, and Zagara became a 4-1 to one shot, which is pretty much where he started. And Silla was, of course, the favorite, and Silla won the race. What did you think about Silla's win, Chad? Look, it wasn't, it wasn't the, uh, the ideal performance, and, and at one of these days, uh, Castellano's going to get her beat because he, he, plays, he plays loose and fast with her uh, for sure. Uh, I wish he would ride her a little bit better, but uh, she was the best horse. I thought, I mean, it was a good a good run up the rail uh, from Cherie DeVoe's horse, Shotgun Hottie. But at the end of the day, I mean, Scylla is, is probably, um, or at least arguably right now, the one of the top three or four Phillies and Mares in the country. So uh, she did what she had to do. She moves on to Saratoga probably and, uh, and look forward to hopefully seeing her over there. Uh, hook up with some of those uh, those top horses in that race. Yeah, Saratoga, of course, starts uh, just in a few days, right, John? Thursday. Thursday. So big, big, big. A week from today. One week from there today. There you go. Big, big uh, time of year, of course. Uh, also, Ottoman Fleet, uh, Chad said free money. And uh, when Chad says free money, he means it. Because Ottoman Fleet was once uh, again the uh, big time winner in that race. Uh, last week, that was uh, the race just before uh, Scylla's victory. So, is Ottoman Fleet going to face good competition next? Are we going to see him like in a big race? Yeah, I, I, I mean, he's up in Saratoga now, but I'd imagine we see him at Colonial Downs next time in the Arlington Million. That would be my guess. I think they'll stretch him out uh, and look forward to seeing him face uh, some of the the best horses. But at that that race, it, it looked like a handwritten race for him, or as we like to call it, a uh, Chad Brown race at New York. I do have to ask you guys, though, because we had a little back and forth uh, with the potential um, uh, inqui- – well, the inquiry came out in the Scylla race, and Zagara had gotten sandwiched between Scylla and a Colt. Um, and I actually thought there was going to be something. So- something was going to happen, but it didn't, and they said it was all right, no problem. Uh, I thought Zagara – now, I don't know what he had left, but he was done after he got he took that beating. Uh, so I could see why there was an inquiry. Um, were you surprised? I know, John, John, you felt there shouldn't have been. Uh, the, fun, the, the inside horse came out. He that was a cult. Culting. Yeah, a cult came out, I thought, and started everything. It's very hard to take. They never take horses down in Churchill. The last horse I remember them taking down was Cyberknife. How many years ago? That was the last DQ I remember there. They just never take horses down. So then I guess you weren't surprised about that either then, Chad, the outcome. No, no, I, I, they're, they're, they're at least consistent. 
I mean, New York is inconsistent. At least they're consistent in not making a change. That's true. It's 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 almost like I, I will say this though. Um, the one thing with the stewards, it's almost like in a boxing match when you scout the referee. Oh, this is what he's known for. He lets you get away with this, or you know, you, you holds, or you know, whatever. It's kind of like the stewards. You know, you know, in every in every different state, kind of what the stewards are looking for, except for New York because it, it just kind of varies by the day. But um, most places, at least, you know, if they'll let them get away with this or they won't, or you know, come out of the gate, whatever the situation might be. So, yeah, that's all you can ask for. Like you said, is consistency, and they're consistent. Uh, as far as the races last week, it, it's taken a long time. Uh, it's probably been a few months, long overdue. Uh, but uh, yes, I finally came out the big winner last week, so uh, that was uh, good. If I needed it. I had to get the monkey off uh, my back. It's been a while, but Kings Barnes had the win last week uh, in uh, the Stephen Foster. Uh, what did you guys think about the Stephen Foster race? Uh, you both had actually, uh, Chad. You had the Ford disarm. Uh, John, you had the two first mission. Yeah, first mission had no excuse. He was horrible. He, he made an easy lead, and he just stopped. I don't know. Kings Barnes is hard, was hard for me to find, but I guess he finally woke up. I didn't like that horse at all. Well, once in a while, you get lucky. Look, I, I mean, I, I wasn't a big first mission fan on this day in this race. I, I thought there was a chance he was going to bounce, and he, and he did. He, he, he's done this now too often, right? He's... He's not. He's a good horse, but he's not a superstar because he has this in his game where he just has these clunkers that he's thrown in, and he's and he's and he's thrown in more clunkers than than good horses are allowed to do. Right? You're allowed to mulligan. He's he's now you know a, a six handicap like Donald Trump and Joe Biden. I, I I think you know disarm. I don't know exactly what the plan was. I don't think that was the plan. Uh, all credit in this goes to Louis Saez. Kings Barn. It, it looked like was a horse that kind of needed to be on the lead. And instead, he, he took back. And that was a strategy that worked out. And, and I, I think the horse showed uh, growth, uh, both uh, physically and, and mentally, to be able to kind of turn off. And it was a lifetime best. He ran a four on the sheets, Sean. I mean, that, wow. I that's what I it was. I don't know where that came from. But he ran, he ran a four on the sheets, which right now makes him the, the favorite of the Breeders' Cup Classic, <laughs> all the sheets. Yeah, so, if, if he ever runs that number again. So. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's, that's for sure. But. He was very good on the day, and and so all credit to, to Jockey Luis Saez for for having him right and, and, and being patient. I thought for sure that they were gonna have to they were gonna send, and he was he was just a, a one run horse, and, and it turns out that he can race. Really, really worked out to his advantage, and that's why Luis Saez plays uh, in America is one of the best in the world. Yeah, now he is uh, eight out of an eight. Actually, he's eight out of eight out of eight i think in the money in every race all races except the kentucky derby so um and he went off a 10 to one so that was even better by the way the se- the horse that finished in second uh pyrenees yeah we talked about him being on the rise i mean yeah. that was a really gutsy second place finish for that horse who was 12 to one morning line so he, he came in on a four a four race win streak I use him with uh, the horse that didn't run his step, the favorite, the break. I didn't like the race they were coming out of. I didn't use either of them, and it hurt. So we'll we'll see where, what's next for Pyrenees. That's a horse to keep an, keep an eye on. I'm assuming the sheets there was an all time high because the best he had had was a nine. So, um, and by the way, in race ten, uh, that was the one where uh, we saw the six win close the game. Sugar. So, um, I ran Ortiz Jr. Uh, went into that race uh, with an eight previous uh and uh picked up the win again i'll tell you i'll tell you what they knew there huh that horse opened up at two to five i did not see that coming and i was like i thought i thought they were crazy at that and he won like a two to five shot should i mean they 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 were all on him as soon as the the the, the line opened up what 25 minutes to post or whatever he opened up at two to five yeah he went off six to five i believe and wow it's a joke yeah, and, they knew and, the money was very strong. Yeah, no and, and uh, we talked about rabbits the week before. Not that there was a rabbit in this race, but you, you guys liked the one at Arcus, and unfortunately, the one uh, was going like head toe to toe with the thirty to two to one shot. Yeah, and that just, was a pretty stupid ride. Well, yeah. Why is he fighting with a thirty-five to one shot? What was the point? Not that he was going to win 
obviously they have bigger fr fish to fry down the road. If you listen to the interview, they interviewed him on TVG trainer Doug O'Neill before the race. And I knew I was in trouble. It sounded, he was like trying to tip everyone off that uh, they're aiming for Del Mar. Uh -oh. And if you bet him, you're in trouble. So <laughs> what could I do? All right. So that was last week. Uh, this week, once again. Also, oh, before we get going, I'm going to remind everybody about subscribing to the channel. Uh, we did eclipse 500 subscribers. So I think we're, we're getting to about 520 now. So uh, we're heading in the right direction, but we got to keep them coming. So keep that in mind, everybody. Subscribes, uh, our subscribers uh, need to get up to 1,000, so then all of our content will be available for free here on YouTube every Thursday, except the specials and things of that nature, which we haven't even gotten to yet. But that means everything that we've been talking about will be available for free every Thursday here on YouTube. But we've got to hit 1,000 subscribers, so please subscribe. Uh, and once again, as I said last week, Nothing happens if you subscribe. You don't get any emails. You don't get any... Uh, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, it, it, it's not a, what am I getting out of this thing? Uh, it, nothing. <laughs> you just hit the subscriber button and everybody leaves you alone. So, all right. So that's going to uh, wrap up the promos for this uh, upcoming card. And again, we're going to talk about two races today that we're going to dive into. Uh, first for our... Uh, we're going to start, actually with our YouTube viewers. And we're gonna start with Belmont at the Big A. This is gonna go off at 4.42, uh, approximately race nine. So this is race nine at Aqueduct, a mile and 3 16th. This is uh, the Belmont Oaks Invitational Stakes. It's $500,000 race. Now this is outer turf. So what's the difference between the outer and inner turf, anything? Strategically, yeah, handicapping wise? Go ahead, Chad, take it. Uh, I mean, the inner turf tends to play a little bit more towards speed. At this point, both tracks are uh, a little bit chewed up. Uh, so you just try to watch the different holes. Okay, so the outer turf, not so speed. But... Uh, it depends where the rail is. Okay. They, not, they haven't announced where the rail is at yet, right? No. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, so uh, the morning line favorite is clearly the seven. That is she. To be honest, you know what? They, they haven't run a lot of races with the rail down, and this being closing weekend. I wonder if they run with the rails down. But, hey, look, there's rain in the forecast. I, I think for sure these races are going to stay on the turf. It's closing weekend. But uh, it is worth noting that there is some rain in the forecast, so it might be a little bit of a softer turf course um, than firm. Okay. Uh, so the seven is the favorite, morning line favorite, the two to one shot. She feels pretty. That's the Velasquez is on board for the fourth straight time. The horse ran in the Breeders' Cup juvenile race, John. Also, what a grade one race. Uh, but that uh, was not, of course, at one of the big tracks. I ran a 13 in that race. Uh, she's gotten better each race. I mean, 16. What do you mean, what do you mean one of the big tracks? Where? Woodbine? Or yeah, Woodbine. Woodbine's a major track. Right? Oh, how come we never do it? It's the Peter for the most part. Ah, okay. Well, anyway, 16, 13, 12, and 8. That's the sheet uh, line. Uh, 8 was the last time out, John. I guess the two things I noticed, you tell me. Will the distance be an issue? And are you a little bit concerned at all about a possible bounce? Well, a bounce I'm not concerned about. She last ran on May 17th, so she has about enough time. The question, I guess, would be the distance. But if you're looking at numbers, she's never done anything wrong. Each race is better than the previous one. She's coming out of the last fastest race. No one else ran an eight here. I mean, there are some European horses that we don't know much about. Hopefully, Chad will fill us in on them. You have a Charles Appleby, you know. So out of the horses that ran in the States, uh, she's the fastest horse. Look, you can't, you can't really fault her for anything. She's... She's done everything the right way. She, she's moved the right direction. John Velasquez seems to fit her like a glove. I, I, it's it's tough to make a case against her. I know she's the the favorite, but she's a must use. And any 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 placing any ticket, you you have to use her. Yeah, you can't you can't find any reason not to use her at all, right, Tom? I mean, you have to, even if you want to try, even if you want to try and beat her, you have to use her for sure. Okay, well, let's go right into it, Chad. Let's talk about the three horses that uh, I think we have one sheet number or two out of the three combined. That's the three fun with flags. We don't have any sheet numbers on the three. Uh, we also don't. We we have uh, no sheet numbers on the five secret satire, the eight to one shot, and then the eight 
Uh, we have a couple of 13s is all. The last 13 was on uh, the first race of this year in February. Uh, that's the 9-2 to two shot. So w- what do you know about the 3, the 5, and the 8? All right, so fun with flags. <clears throat> For every year since the Belmont Derby and Belmont Oaks started, Saul Kuhlman, the owner of Matacat Stables, has, has worked with some French uh, agents uh, to try and buy a horse o- over there and bring over here. Uh, normally it starts with the trainer over there and then ends up, you know, probably funneling to like a Chad Brown barn and staying here the rest of the year. Uh, <clears throat> with with uh, the jock agent for Manny Franco now intimately involved with Saul Kuhlman running his day-to-day business, uh, you see Manny Franco on the horse, so that's, <clears throat> that's not a surprise at all. Uh, the horse is okay. Uh, look, it's a cutback in distance for her. She's been running a mile and five sixteenths, a mile and a quarter uh, her last two starts. So you, you, you say, is there a distance question on Chief Hills Pretty? There's definitely not a distance question on Fun with Flags. So uh, that part that part's okay. My, my concern with this filly is, is the fact that she's she hasn't shown that, that top effort yet. She hasn't really faced it, that top horse. I mean, look, half day – the filly that beat her last time is a nice filly, but I wouldn't necessarily call her an elite filly. And, and to me, I think this is a filly that might be okay and might continue to get better. If this race was a little softer, then I would I would give her a little bit of a better chance. But the Americans in here are a pretty, pretty solid group, uh, so I, I think she might be up against it here a little bit, fun with flags. Although the, the maiden Howard Wallowitz won uh, two weeks ago in, in America, so maybe fun with flags can continue the Big Bang Theory uh, naming game uh, for those that like that show. Uh, when you talk about Secret Satire, uh, my, my concern with Secret Satire, look, she's coming out of a Group 1 uh, last time out in Epson, which is a serious race, okay? She was 10th beaten 24 lengths that day. My concern more than anything is, oh, she Murphy's ridden this filly uh, in four of her five lifetime starts. If they thought the world of her, and Andrew Balding does a really, really good job, if they thought the world of her, I just feel like maybe she, you know, he would have come over for the mount. I understand they get Frankie the Tory. He's ridden for Andrew Balding for years and years and years. Uh, I just would have liked to see if they really were super, super high on the Philly. I would have liked to see an Ocean Murphy kind of come over uh, and ride. There's not a big, big weekend of, of, of activity in, in Europe this weekend. And he's a guy who's proven that he likes being in America. He rode this winter in Gulfstream Park. Uh, so that would be my, my one concern. Uh, with that horse, but uh, but a nice look, a, a nice enough horse. I, I think you have to ride the horse hard. You, you you know, she 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 likes to be a little bit aggressive. So Frankie's gonna have to try and work out a trip here where he can get her under cover, um, or just go for the lead. But I, I think she's better if she can just kind of sit off of something. <clears throat> Not that there's a lot of speed in this race. And then Cinderella's dream. Look, I was in Dubai when she ran her two races. Uh, she was she was much the best. In, in in both those races, um, I just the quality of what she beat in there. I'm not sold on. She came back and, and ran in the in the Group One in Newmarket last time out, and she was seventh. But she was only beaten four and a half lengths. Porter Fortuna was second. Porter Fortuna came back and and ran a huge huge race uh, in Royal Ascot uh, for our friend Steve Weston and company. So look, I, I don't think she's without a chance here. I would rate Cinderella's Dreams the best chances of the three. And she's had more time to acclimate over here. She's been in Saratoga for a month now, uh, pointing for this race. The other two European fillies, Andrew Balding, Secret Satire, and Fun with Flags, uh, they got here, I believe, on Monday or Tuesday. So they they cleared they cleared customs. They were at the Ark at, at, at JFK for a few days. They came here. They've been, they've been here at Belmont for a few days and now shipping over to Aqueduct because, unfortunately, you can't you can't train at Aqueduct. So uh, just some shipping, some some stuff going on. Uh, so of the three, I'd prefer Cinderella's Dream the most, but I, she's not going to be my top selection here. I I, I just I, I think she feels pretty for one. Um, has all the markings of a star horse. So it's going to be tough to beat her. Uh, yeah, and uh, so and she's obviously the uh, lower. Well, she's the favorite of the three. She's at nine to two. If you had to pick, yeah. uh, the other two are long shots, ten to one and eight to one. If you had to pick uh, one of those two long shots, who would it be? Uh, well, I'll say I'll say this: if it's on if if it's on a softer turf course, if it's raining, I'll go with Fun with Flags because she's run she's run well on soft turf. Where Secret Satire seems like her her better races have come on a harder surface. Um, so I'll I'll say if there's rain 
rain in the forecast, then I would say fun with flags. If there's not rain in the forecast, I would say secret satire. But her her last her last race, which was her worst race, obviously against tougher field, but on good to soft, she got beat twenty four and a half lengths. So um, good to soft, I don't think they would be be excited about over there. I wouldn't expect to see a flying dismount if it's raining outside. All right, awesome job, Chad. Appreciate it. Now let's move on. Uh, we are. By the way, they paid a lot of money for uh, fun with flags, didn't they? Um, let's uh, go to the two horse, John. And this is definitely uh, one of the horses to beat. Uh, you like the odds at five to one. You're getting Brown and Pratt. Uh, started off with the 16 last year. 12 in February. Had the predictable bounce to a 15. Came back with a 12. So. You you got to win this race. You're gonna probably have to have single digits, and she's definitely heading in the right direction. Plus, you're getting five to one, and she does have a win over the track. So, what about dynamic pricing? She's fine. I, she, I mean, obviously, listen, she's a she's definitely has a legitimate chance. But why is she so much better than the one? The one's never done anything wrong. 15, 15, 13 last time out. So the two has a twelve. The one is twice the price of the two. I'm just saying, if you're looking sure. for other options, but I don't think the sevens are getting beat. I agree with Chad. I think the seven is going to be very tough to beat. I mean, so, look, with Ch- with Chad Brown, often at least in one of his races, the horse is the favorite. The fact that this filly's never been the favorite is a little bit of a concern. But she was good last time. I I, I didn't like her last time, uh, and she was really really good on the on the undercard uh, uh, on Kentucky Derby Day, on what was a yielding turf that day, which we might get here on Saturday. My, my thing is, why does Irod Ortiz hop off to ride the other one? I understand it's a Judmont, the other one's a Judmont horse, but, I mean, he rides a lot for Clarevich. And uh, he, ta- he he jumps off to ride the sixth, Suggesta, who did win the prep for this race in the Wonder again. But, I mean, visually speaking, for me, dynamic pricing, if you watch the last replay of both races, dynamic pricing was the more impressive of the two. Um, so a little bit of a surprise to me that, that – I read hopped off and, and, and rides the, the Judmont Bill in Suggesta. The two has also raced against much better horses. I mean, she's been in three consecutive stakes in a row where the, the Suggesta hasn't really been, no? I yeah, mean, no, it's, 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 it's interesting. But obviously, look, Chad Brown and Flavian Pratt have had a lot of success together. Chad Brown and I would have had a lot of success together. So uh, interesting to see how all that, that kind of played out. And, and look, Sheree DeVoe obviously a former longtime assistant for Chad Brown would like nothing better than to beat both Chad Brown horses <laughs> after he nailed her on the wire uh, in the Breeders' Cup with Hard to Justify. So uh, she, she's she's looking for revenge, and uh, it, she might just get it here on Saturday. Uh, with dynamic pricing's closing style, uh, the rest of this field, is, is, that a, is that a good, you know, is that, a, is that will that work in her favor or against her in this race? I don't think yeah. it difference I, I, personally you got to see how the race develops uh, well, one thing i'll tell you and john you watch a lot of races flavian pratt probably fits her better with her running style because i mean he he's he's as patient as come i read can sit on one obviously he's won a lot of races like that but flavian pratt he, he's the typical kind of european cover him up and make that unleash that that rally with the fury kind of move that this philly i mean she was she was really good last time um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of where she is, if she can work out a good trip, uh, split horses or however the race may, may have to play out. Um, there's not a ton, a ton of early pace in this race. I just, I have a feeling that they're not going to go super, super fast in front. I know we had the Chad Brown rabbit when we covered these races a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I, I can't see Irad kind of being the rabbit for Flavian. If it was Irad and Jose, maybe it'd be a little bit different, but I think Irad's going to run his race here. I think she feels pretty can be close, but doesn't want to be on the lead, wants to have a target. Uh, so for me, you know, does one of the European horses lead? I, I think Secret Satire wants to lead. I don't know that Frank Hattori wants her to go. So I don't think they go fast enough early, which probably hampers uh, that late kick of dynamic pricing. And I, 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 I like her, but I, I do think she might be up against it from the dynamics of the race. Okay, speaking of Suggesta, the uh, six horse, that's the other Chad Brown horse, as you mentioned. John, the horse hasn't done anything wrong. Uh, a little bit slow, though, but still heading in the right direction. Uh, everything is straightforward. 23, 18, 15, 14. Won the last two races. Won that grade two race. Won over the track. You're getting six to one also with Brown and Red Ortiz Jr. at this point in time. So what about Suggesta? 
But you said it yourself. She hasn't done anything wrong, but she's a little slower and she's going to be a short price. The line is fine on the sheet. She looks fine. She's like other horses, but she doesn't offer any value. My, my only thing is, I, I thought I thought that the race itself last time was a little slow on a firm turf horse, where where the times have been faster of recency in in New York. And she came home her last her last eighth and twelve and one. Normally those top turf horses, you're seeing them come home eleven and three, eleven and four. So, I mean, she she did what she had to do. She held off side beat of the wire. She maintained that same half length advantage, but. Um, if you like Suggesta, you almost have to like Side B, and then your ticket's getting really, really big. Yeah, so, that's right. Obviously. And you and you're using a short price source to begin with on top. So yeah, I, I'm just I, I'm going to try and beat Suggesta here. All right. Selections? Uh, no, we're we're not done yet. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the one, John. Uh, and and uh, matter of fact, it's just two ten to one shots. You got the one pinup Betty. You mentioned the sheet numbers, back to back wins. You also have uh, Buchu. Um, and uh, Butcher's uh, an interesting horse because, as you can see, early uh, last year between August and uh, November, uh, she, actually she went 22, 18, 14, bounced to a 17, started the year in April after, what, five months off with a 10 in the grade two win. She's got two grade two wins, by the way. Bounced to a 14. The, the one that's disappointing was the fact that she did not go back forward in the last race. That she did. Have, she had a little bit of an excuse because uh, it was a slow pace, so okay. she didn't have anything to close into. I guess. Listen, she's okay at ten to one. You probably should be using her. No one else, not many other horses in this race have the ten. Yeah, that she has. And she gets so, Rosario yeah. for the first. And by time. the way, I like the Ridus, which I think it's an upgrade personally. And uh, you know, anyone that wanted to make a case for the horse, I have no problem. Out of curiosity, John, who has Bob Baffert won more races with Lifetime, Martin Garcia or Joel Rosario? Martin Garcia, but that's Probably because right. he, no, he no, was, it was he a wrote for him three, three years as, as number one rider or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Chad, anything on the one and the four? Look, I mean, Luis Saez was supposed to come up here and ride. He's he's uh, he's in Panama with his uh, with his father, so uh, he he doesn't get a chance to. Uh, to come ride this filly, but they were they were excited the way she ran last time. They wanted to follow her. Uh, obviously, this looked like the the right spot. Five hundred thousand dollar grade one. Um, but look, I I just she needs to continue moving forward, right? Buchu needs to continue moving forward. Um, even Cy B to <laughs> lucky extent out of one of my favorite horses of all time, a Marinade Motion Drive that ran forever uh, for Grand Motion. I, they they have to move forward and. This is a race where there's – and, John, you, you tell me. Look, we, we talked about this before the Ohio Derby, right, where that horse wasn't as proven yet as the Brad Cox horse, but it looked like in a small field the right circumstances, right opportunity. Here, there just looks like there's a couple of horses here with proven, proven form, and these horses need to take the, that next jump. And it doesn't – I can't make any excuses for, for she feels pretty to back up to them. So even if they move forward, I don't know even if a move forward – is enough. Does that make sense, John? Yeah, but the only one, one that's going to beat She Feels Pretty is She Feels Pretty herself because she did run a big figure last time, but she's never done anything wrong. She just looks like the right horse, and I agree with you, Chad. I think she's going to beat this group. I really do. And, and, and the thing is, when it comes to sheets, and I've, I've had this conversation a lot with some people, but look, people get concerned when you run a, a new top in a sheet, which you should, right? I mean, that's proven out over time, John. However, to me, and you tell me, John, because you've been doing this for a long, long time with the sheets. For me, it's how you do it. So if you run a lifetime best sheet number, okay, or lifetime low sheet number, and you're, you're all out, you're in a duel, you're in a battle, you grind it out, there's more of a chance of you regressing than if you run an all-time best sheet number and you did it the way that she feels pretty did it, where it was basically on her own, right? And so she took that step forward from two to three, which is, which is a, nam, a normal natural progression running six, seven months apart from each other. And I can see her continuing to move forward. Uh, I don't think that was a, a, a one number number where she needs all that time to recover, John. Well, she does need time to recover. The, but it, listen, if she repeats, she's going to win for fun anyway. Even if she goes backwards a couple of points, she should beat this group. And I don't know. And like I you said, John, she's on that six-week window, yeah, which is perfect. right where you want it. Yeah. Yeah. No one's complaining. Yeah. All right. So, John? I'm picking the seven. She feels pretty exact is over the one, two, and four. Seven over the one, two, and four. Chad? 
I'm going to take the seven. Uh, uh, she feels pretty on top of the two uh, dynamic pricing, the eight Cinderella's Dream and the nine side B. Okay. And Greg? I'm going to stay with the seven as well, and I'm going to go over four and nine. Okay. So well, that's – yeah, that's it for YouTube, everybody. So don't forget, if uh, you would like to find out what's going on with the race in Indianapolis, as well as a couple of bonus picks Chad's going to get to from Prairie Meadows, uh, check out the link in the description and join our Patreon at just $5. And it's monthly, so you can uh, cancel at any time.